Hello and welcome. Many thanks for joining us here on Journey to Islam. On this show, we get to hear from some of the people who at a point in their lifetime converted to Islam. Here in this village in the Volta region of Ghana, known as Agbasakope, some four decades ago, a young man converted to Islam. His father was a fetish priest who looked forward to training him to take after him. He defied the wish of his father and converted to Islam. We are here to speak to him and to find out from him what the journey was like for him as he pursued that journey to Islam. We are here with Al Haji Muhammad. Agbeve. Alaji, thank you very much for uh, accepting us into this vicinity where I believe you grew up. Am I right? Yes. I grew up here. I was born here. I grew up here. And what can you tell us about life here in those early days of your life? Yeah, you see, it's a, a farming community. And my father was a farmer and also a fetish priest. So he came and he had a big land here. From there, when you start growing up, you'll be searching and find out which of the children who can succeed him. So I think uh, you have, he had elder children before I was born, but the relationship between me and my father was very, very, very good. Uh, because so, we started here as a farmer, and during his time, his lifetime, because he had an idol room here. He was, was a, a strong fetish man from the home and here. So what actually happened was, uh, uh, when we started as a fetish man, immediately you are born, they will take you to the shrine, then a ritual will be performed for you. Then from there, uh, other things will continue. So, in short, if you, if you ask me what was the life here, by then the life was very, very good. And um, we were enjoying the house in the village here. And also all the time, because it's a, there's a shrine here, and it was a fetish, goats and fowl will be coming here all the time. And all the time, I think the, 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 the village was a very, very busy place. So, as you were growing up and uh, you saw all these people come to your father who was a fetish priest and there was an idol in your house and they were making these sacrifices. Did you have any faith in, in, in the idols at the time? That time you have faith in it because that's how to you were taught since infancy. So you have faith in it. And uh, you believe that there's God. You see, we believe. They will teach you that there's God. But that God is very slow in taking decision. But adults, are uh, very fast taking decision. So that is what we were taught from the beginning. So as you are in, and at that people will come, because he was a fetish also a herbalist. He combined both. So when you come after performing all the rice at the fetish side, then he will send you also to go and put the leaves or the roots or the back of tree and prepare medicine for you. So we thought it was rather the, the idol that was rather curing the people. But later on, before you got to know that, it was rather the herbs that was curing the people. I'm just wondering, so your father was a fetish priest. Was he alive when you decided to join Islam? He was alive. So I went to Accra to visit my aunt. When I got there, Ahmedis were preaching at Seker. So I stood there, listened to them. In fact, I asked certain questions. So I decided to join Islam by then. But I knew that when I joined Islam at that time, my father would not take it easy. And I myself, myself also would not take it easy. So I came back. Then I went again to visit my sister by then. 
in fact how the Ahmadis were preaching quoting from the Bible and the Quran and they talk also about shrine they talk about Christianity and Islam and when they compare in the Bible I found that Islam well, the, 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 this is interesting you talk about the Quran you talk about the Bible yes. and these were the days that your father was a fetish priest yes. what did you know about the Quran and about the Bible they were using both Bible and Quran the preachers no I'm, I'm talking about you what did you personally know about the Quran and about the Bible to the extent that a conversation around these two books was able to what attract what your attention <laughs> what happened by then I did it. I was totally ignorant about Bible and Quran. Mm -hmm. But when I was listening to the preaching, that, that is where I got to know that, oh, there's a book like this. So I show interest and I started listening to them carefully. Mm. That's how I came. Do you recollect what kind of uh, message they were delivering at the time to the extent that a passerby like you was attracted, you stood by? And it went beyond just listening, but you applying to join Islam at the time. When I read that, they were preaching, that by then they were saying, uh, they were preaching the unity, the oneness of Allah. That he, there is only one God to be worshipped. So I stood there, there were two preachers. After that, in fact, I, wo I was very, very convinced the way the preacher treated the topic. Then the second preacher came and, s and also preached about Islam in the Bible. So I listened to that one also. Though we were first, but we were, we were school in a Christian school. Mm. So we know Bible by then, because we were then in a Presby school. So when they, uh, the, when, uh, when they were talking like Islam in the Bible, the prostration, abrusion, and oh, then I got to know ah, what is actually happening. But by then, too, in this village, Hausa people used to come here and sell things to us. When they come here, they will be praying how they prostrate, how they go about the whole thing. Then I recollected that, then, that those people we call Hausa, they were rather on the right way. But you see, you also mentioned that uh, at the time that you had not converted and growing up under the tutelage of your father, you were given the impression that the God of Muslims and the God of Christians was a slow God yes. who makes decisions very slowly, slowly, but the God that the fetish was yes. teaching you faster. was a fast God. So how, how, at what point then did you convince yourself that it's better to follow that slow God than to follow that uh, fast God, so to speak? Uh -huh. Um, the moment, what I realized that day was, uh, in fact, the preachers were able to convince him on all anger. Mm. On all anger. That's why I said, I asked them question. That, so that God, does he exist? Can he protect us? How can he protect us? So, you see, they were able to convince me even how it rain, how the sun shine, how the, the sun appear, how it is settled. It was there I got you know that no. So that's why I said the first time I listened, I came here. Stay here for some time. I went back to my sister. My sister's in Accra. She was then staying uh, at, at Alajo. So I went there again. Then I came to the circle again. It was there. I was there for about two weeks. It was there I got convinced that no, what we were thinking then, that God was too slow, but Adol was rather faster. Those thoughts would begin to go away from my mind. So at one point, I made the decision that I would join Islam Ahmadiyya in the Bible. All right, so you took the decision. Obviously, you are not an island. You live with people. Your yeah. father was still alive, yeah. and I guess your mother was still, and is still alive. Uh, uh, so, you came back? I came back. You accepted Islam? I accepted Islam. How did you communicate that to your when family? I accepted Islam. I came back and told them that now I have accepted Islam. Then by then, too, I decided to go to Accra 
and find some job to do and be coming home. So in fact, I, according to in our tradition, you have to wake up about three o'clock if you have a very important issue with your father or your mother. Three a.m. you have to. So I know, I told him that I will be seeing him the next day at exactly three p.m. The three a.m. So I knocked the door. He opened. And uh, my mother too was there. Then I told them that after taking the decision to join Islam and media, Islam, we called it by then Hausa mm -hmm. Church. He said, Why? Am I serious? He asked me, he called my name by then. Typical home name. Mm. So, Are you serious? We'll be interested in that name because the Muhammad was a name you acquired <laughs> later, much, much later. So yeah. at this point in time, what was that name? And you see, we believe in reincarnation, mm. that somebody would die and come back. So what, I, what actually happened was that he used to call me Toga because that means Toga, that my, my senior father, that means my senior father. So he called me, I said, Toga, are you serious? I said, I am serious. Then you say, go. I'll, I've heard it. I'll come to you again. Or I'll call you. So when I left him, we were here by one month, and I went to Accra. So it was in Accra. One evening, they came. By then, there was no phone. So they came. I said, they are normal visit. So he told me that tomorrow, at, f at 4 a.m., I will need you, plus your sister. I agree to it. So when you met that day, he told me that this is one of his serious matter he's coming to tell me today. He was coming to tell me today. And I said, okay. Uh, I have so many children, but you in particular, I will never accept to leave me and join Islam. I just can't join. I said, why? He said, no. I started training you. I saw something in you. So I started training you more than my children to take over from me, especially at the shrine, after he passed away. I said, sure. In fact, that day, how I saw my father and my mother, I saw that even there was tear. Then I told him that I was also here. But oh no, he also added that when I die, I know you are the only person who can stand by me and bury me. Then I told him that for bear, I know, I, let me also assure you that if Allah, oh, Inshallah, you won't die as an adult worshiper, you will break your adult. Then he look at me and he said, let's pause there. So when I saw him like that, I found that you know, my father was so bitter for me at that time. Though he didn't say anything or insulting me, something like that. But he was finding a way of convincing me back. Then by then I said, okay, if so, I also have to consult my missionaries and find out what to do. So I went to the mission house at Osu and met one movie called movie Ali and told him about the problem, my challenges after joining it. This was in 1973. 1973, right. right. So I went there. I narrated all the story to him. And he said, oh, is your father alive? I said, he's alive. He just left me to the village. And he told me that I will give you the Huzu's uh, address so that you write to him directly yourself. State everything that your father told you and add whatever you want to add to it and send it to him. Okay, so I wrote the letter. I sent it. By then, to have about two weeks, the letter came. Or to one month or so. Or two weeks to three weeks, then the letter came. <laughs> Who said that he has prayed for me? And uh, I should not fear anything. And 
my father himself will throw everything away and he will accept you back as he was you was with him and i said okay then i wrote another letter again because by then when i come to the village here i see that we are look as if my father was not happy with me again and i also don't want to see that type of uh, uh, struggling or with my father. I look as if I'm not listening to him. So I wrote the letter again. That letter, the reply didn't come. And my father called me, sent somebody, but then there was no phone. Mm. So he sent somebody to Accra that now he has seen that he has missed the road. You should come and break the idols for him. By then, the idol was having a complete building like this, more than this, over there. Mm -hmm. ah, I didn't believe it. My father, because he has got name, both home and outside home. My father would say, we should come and break the idols for him. And I said, okay. Then I went back to the movie. By then, movie, uh, movie Ali again. Mm. And narrated a story to him. Then he said, Okay, I should run back to Huzu. So I came quickly, I wrote to him. Then we came. Then I found two, three, my brother, my senior brother, one uh, Ahmedi now is at uh, Kasuako Hudo, and one Abu Bakar, he's a deceased now, plus myself. When we came here, my father himself had threw a lot of the adults away. Less of small. I was calling you. The thing was, it looked as if the, uh, something was doing the, I don't know how to describe it. So you can't sleep while the adults are still there. Then I got to know that Huzu, they are there. They are actually God representatives on this way. So we threw the rest away. So when you came back, what did your father tell you directly? That what, what had resulted in the decision that he had taken to do away with the idols? No, he just told me that. Now you are seeing that, no, he has diverted from the right course. And he just wants to become, to throw the idols away and find a way or find the right way to see God. By then, he told me that he has had a dream. When the thing started, he had a dream that they show him somebody that this is Noah. Mm -hmm. Noah. And uh, they said, have you heard of Noah before? He said, no. In the dream, he said, no. And I said, he said, ah. So you haven't heard that during a uh, prophet time, uh, the whole world, there was a flood and the whole world was submerged and there wasn't anybody again apart from you said yes this is the man so you must follow him then another day he dreamt and they say Moses they show you a picture very picture of beard that is Moses that's how he started it mm -hmm. So when he saw all these things, and one day, he was there, uh, he was sleeping the same, and he had a dream. When he had a dream, he, had, he saw a lot of people in white gown. When they were worshiping God, they were prostrating. And uh, they showed him another place, too, and they asked him, those people are in a place which in fact, was very, very miserable. And they told him that, you see your people, your people, you, the other was, but you see the way they are. So you have to follow the, the two prophets I'll show you so that you join these people. Mm -hmm. So it was there, he realized that, no. Where we have gone, I have gone, he has seen that we are on the right way. Because you show, they were all in Hoagon with heart and they were praying bowing down, coming up and prostrating. So once you had accepted, then what? When I accepted Islam, 
By then, I had a job at a fishing corporation. I was staying in Accra. So I showed interest in preaching. So I joined the preachers who did buy it for me. Isa Iku, may Allah be pleased with him. He was a very strong preacher. I joined them. So I started, to, I started learning preaching from them, and I became one of the pioneer preachers to date. Well, it's interesting. interesting. So you say there were a lot of temptations along the way. What kind of temptations are these? The temptations I had, in fact, all my business gone down. And one day, we were, went to Juma. When I came back, my son was limping. Mm. And when I took him to Kwarebu, they told me the bull here is completely spoiled. So they have to cut the bone. He was there about five years, they have to cut the bone from here. But then the mother too was pregnant again. Seven, getting to seven months, they told me that, that the, 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 the baby is dead in the stomach. The one day, in fact, I, to, I wake up and told God that, my God, you are only God. I was a fetish man. And I would never go back. But if you want me to be disgraced in this world, then take my life rather. I told God my prayers like that. Because I cannot sit down and things are all going bad for me. Then I started writing to Wuzu. I wrote to fourth Wuzu until one day, I will send a letter today, forget that, forgetting that I've sent a letter today. Next day I'll write it. Then one of his, he wrote a letter with his own hand and signed. He wrote the letter with his own English hand and signed. Then I heard that he will be coming. Then I made me it. That, oh, this is the first time. Do I saw the tefer if he came here and saw him. But now I'm in danger. If I sight the Khalifa, you see, when they come, they will stand on the plane, the gate there, and wave us. And by Khalifa, you're talking about the supreme leader the supreme of the leader. Ahmadiyya Muslim yeah, community. The Khalifa, yeah. the supreme leader of the worldwide Ahmadiyya community. So I may hear that, my God, if this man, and I know he's your representative on this world, ever, if I cite him, my niet is, don't disgrace me. That's the niet. Don't let the people whom you were worshiping the same idol tell me something that you now look at where you are now. I made this niet. So when I made the niet and then I saw him, then I boarded my taxi and came back. When I came back, Things were so difficult for me. But the operation was done, as I told you, that some of them are my old children. So I cast my, my, my mind back to the Quran quotation. And my wife, pregnant boy. And one, my first daughter, who has a depression. Immediate after schooling, I had a depression. You said that. So you see that it was coming. When this one comes today, next day this will come, next day this will come. So what actually happened is, I, and I don't joke with my Taiju. So when Huzu came and left, the house we went today, I woke up from my bedroom, I came to the wall, and I was, I prayed Taiju and was lying down. When I was lying down, there on the wall, I saw an Arabic boldly written in the Laha Masabri. It, it was really as if the television screwing. Mm. Then you come back in the Laha Masabri. Three times. Meaning? Meaning, God is with those who are patient. So when I stood up, very boldly on the wall. God is with those 
who are patients. patients. This is the inscription you the saw inscription on, saw the, on wall, the wall in your own house. My own wow. house. And you didn't put, put that, that there. there. I so I wrote, I wrote it in my Quran, mm. a part of Quran. Yeah. Yeah, I jotted it there. Mm. Then from there, things were up and down like that. Uh, but today, I think uh, whatever God will do to his servant is what he's doing to me now. And, then, and you also said that one of your prayers was that, please, God, do not allow my enemies to, quote, unquote, laugh at me. Uh, does that suggest that people who, who, were, who were against your joining Islam gave you some reasons not to join Islam? What, what were the kind of impressions they gave you about Islam? No, they told me. When the media joined Islam, they told me that that religion belonged to the Hausa people, especially the Northerners. Mm. And when you join Islam, you must know that and you forsake your grandfather's idol. You have a big problem in your lifetime. So that one, if I go home, if I come here, when you go to any gathering, that was the message to me. Because they knew that I have to take uh, take over from my father. So first for that way, it was uh, a message everywhere, whenever they meet her. Whenever they meet her. And when other people got to find out that you had joined Islam, and uh, if they were Muslims, uh, who were not necessarily Ahmadi Muslims, because you had joined the Ahmadiyya Muslim uh, Association, what did they tell you about the Ahmadiyya Jamaat itself? Uh, because it appears that within the Islamic uh, society, there are some misconceptions. Uh, did you face any of these uh, misconceptions about Ahmadiyya whilst you were joining? Because, you see, uh, when you, uh, what I have seen like that, God loved me. So immediately I joined Ahmadiyya, I was working with the preachers. So if you are working with those people or you are with them all the time, you will see that because of the preaching, it also improves your faith. So that was the best thing. But from what I saw from my father, when Wuzu told me that we shouldn't fear, your father will join you. And it happened. It was there I saw that, no, I'm on the right path. I'd like to take your final comments now, and um, I'd like to find out uh, if you feel within you that over the years since you became a Muslim, and comparing that to the days before you became a Muslim, whether or not you feel that you've grown in terms of your spirituality. Uh, as for that, I think uh, I'll thank God for that. Because I've been moving with all that meal whenever I go with the missionaries. So I think uh, for spirituality, we are all praying to climb to the highest ladder for now. I think uh, where God has put me, I'm only praying that I should grow spiritually more than this. All right, thank you very much, Alaji uh, Mohammed Agweve, for speaking to us. Uh, this is where we will draw the curtain on today's journey to Islam. And we've been speaking to Alhaji Mohammed Agbebe. He is a very successful herbal doctor here in Ghana. We've been speaking to him from uh, the very beginnings of his life where he began as a, a student fetish priest because his father was a fetish priest. Fortunately, he joined Islam before he could develop into a full fetish priest. He has since converted his wife to Islam. His children are all Muslims today. And he says that nothing will ever convince him to leave the religion of Islam. That was the story of Al-Haji Muhammad Agbeve. We'll bring you some other stories when we meet you again on this same platform at this same time. Stay with us. We'll be back the next time, inshallah.
Muhammadur Rasulullah.